Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be doing equilibrium calculations. And these calculations that we're going to do in this video are a little easier. They don't involve what's called ice tables, which is a more challenging form of equilibrium calculations. So if you're interested in ice table calculations, check out the episode I link to below. In this video, what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the equilibrium constant from equilibrium concentrations. So the idea is our reaction has run forward to the point where we're at equilibrium. And so if we have those concentrations, we can really easily just pluck them into our equilibrium expression and calculate our equilibrium constant. We'll also take a look at a calculation where we have the equilibrium constant and the concentration of most of our reactants at equilibrium, but not one of them, and we'll solve for that one we don't know. So let's take a look at these problems. These problems are from the OpenStax chemistry textbook. So this is from the kinetics chapter and it's problem number 54. And here we're given a bunch of equilibrium concentrations. So it says, okay, we can go ahead and make hydrogen from this reaction right here. And then it tells us these are all the concentrations at equilibrium. So all we have to do if we want to calculate the equilibrium constant is write our expression for the equilibrium constant in terms of variables, in terms of the chemical reactants. And then we plug in our equilibrium concentrations. And really importantly, this is the concentrations at equilibrium, when the reaction has run to completion. And then we're going to calculate our unknown, whether that's the equilibrium constant or one of the concentrations. So let's go ahead and do that. So step one, write the expression for our equilibrium constant. And we're going to write Kc since we're given concentrations. Remember that we put products over reactants and our products are in the brackets, which means we're dealing with molarity. And I'm gonna raise hydrogen to the third power because there's a three in front of hydrogen. And I'm gonna raise carbon monoxide to the first power because there's a one in front of carbon monoxide. And then those are my products and I'm gonna divide them by my reactants, which will be water, again to the first power because there's a one in front of water. And then methane, also to the first power because there's a one in front of methane an implied one right there. So that is the mathematical expression for my equilibrium constant. And now if I want to know the equilibrium constant's value, all I have to do is go ahead and plug in those guys to calculate Kc. So you can see this is not a super challenging form of, of an equilibrium problem, but it's an important one to know how to do before you try to go to do more challenging ones. So we're gonna plug in our hydrogen concentration, which we see is 1.15. So it tells us right here that our hydrogen concentration is 1.15 molar. And we're gonna cube that. Our carbon monoxide concentration is 0 0.126, and we're gonna divide that by our water concentration, which is 0 0.242, and by our methane concentration, which is 0 0.126. And then we can plug that all into a calculator, and we'll get out our value for Kc. In this case, we should get 6.28. And remember that our equilibrium constants are unitless, so we just leave it as 6.28. So that's calculating the equilibrium constant from equilibrium concentrations. Now we're gonna take a look at a problem where we're given the equilibrium constant and we wanna know one of the concentrations of our chemical species. So here we're told basically we're running this reaction. And notice now we're given our equilibrium constant and we're also given the concentration of hydrogen, the concentration of nitrogen, and we just don't have the concentration of NH3. So we have concentration of two of three of our species and the equilibrium constant. This means it's pretty straightforward to go ahead now and calculate the concentration of NH3. How do we do that? Well, once again, we're going to write down our expression for our equilibrium constant. Again, it's a Kc, which means it's in terms of concentrations because we've been given their molarities. If we've been given their pressures, we'd use the Kp, but it looks pretty similar. So we got NH3 up top, that's one of our products, and it is squared. And then on the bottom, we have N2, that's one of our reactants, and our other reactant, H2, again raised to the third power. In this case, what we wanna solve for is NH3. We wanna solve for this guy. So before I plug in those numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and do some algebra to solve for NH3. What we gotta do is we gotta multiply both sides by our N2 and our H2. And then eventually, to get rid of this squared right there, we're going to take the square root. So the next line in our algebra will be, okay, well, we've multiplied the left-hand side by N2, by H2, cubed. And that's all times our Kc. And that's equal to our concentration in terms of NH3 
squared. So to get rid of that squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides, and that gets rid of that guy. And then we just plug in our values. So we have the square root of the concentration of nitrogen. In this case, we see that the concentration of nitrogen is 1.2 molar times the concentration of hydrogen, which is 0 0.24 molar cubed. And then we want to multiply that by our Kc, which it tells us is 0 0.5. So when we do all that, we'll get our concentration of NH3, which turns out to be 0 0.091 molar. That's our NH3 concentration. Notice I kept two sig figs, and that's because we have two sig figs for our concentrations in our givens. So these are some simpler equilibrium calculations that we can do, where we have basically all but one of our unknowns. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you want to go on to harder equilibrium calculations, check out the link below. You can also subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.